They're available at the Coliseum up to 4 o'clock today, all day Monday, and at all Ticketmaster locations. Bill? That's right, Dave. Now, Jerry Lawler and Bill Dundee's been around here a long time, brother, and they've had all kinds of matches, from scaffold matches, and you name it, we've been in it. But this is the first time in my career I've ever seen two women get into a cage and start dressed and end up any way they want. And that's the way we want it, white girl, because like Tessa said, every time she got to beat you up, somebody run in and stopped it. Well, there's no stopping it Monday night. It's going to be Tessa getting rid of you, and then you'll be so embarrassed you won't come back no more, and that'll suit us just fine. And then it's another cage match with a heartthrob, the king, and the superstar. And there ain't no three tougher men walking the face of God's green earth than us. And you, I know what you're saying. Yeah, it's an disadvantage because they got Dundee, that little runt. Well, it's all been said about me before, punk. And I'm still here. And I'm gunning for you, white boy. I don't care about them other two because Jerry Lawler and Austin Idol will take care of them. Tess is already going to have taken care of that little hussy you run around with. And I'm taking care of you, bud. So you zoom in on this face and you take a good look at it. Because this is the face that's putting you out of professional wrestling, Jack. You're not sure you're letting me no more, nor Tessa. White girl's going to be gone, and I'm taking care of you in the cage match. As sure as my name's Bill Superstar Dundee, then you'll both be out of here, Jack. All right, your partner, one of them, Jerry Lawler. All I want to say, I'll keep it short and I'll keep it sweet. A cage match says it all. Every week that we've wrestled these jerks, just the same situation as Tessa has had with the dirty white girl, somebody seems to interfere. We've even had to handcuff Tom Burton. He, uh, we've tried everything to keep some kind of interference out of the match. One week it's Tatum. The next week, last week, it's Tom Burton comes from the back. Well, I don't know if you heard what Eddie Marlin said out here a while ago, but there is no more Tom Burton. One half of the Dirty White Boys has been suspended, so he's not even going to be allowed in the Coliseum. He's out of town. We don't have to worry about him, and we wouldn't have to anyway because that 12-foot high steel cage is going to keep everybody out and more importantly, it's going to keep everybody in. So, Eddie Gilbert, you can run out here and run your little mouth and make your little jokes and fall down and have your phony little heart attacks. Well, let me tell you something. Monday night, when we get our hands on you, you may be having one of those heart attacks for real, pal, because I promise you, when the king and the superstar and the universal heartthrob get three jerks like you inside a cage, it's not going to be a pretty sight. I can promise you this. Eddie Gilbert... You and that punk Sam Lowe, I promise you, when Monday night's over with, your own mothers are not going to recognize you. Now, Austin Idol's got a few words that he wants to say. They took a camera in. They talked to him right after the match last week. This may not be a pretty sight, but Eddie Gilbert, Dirty White Boy, and John Tatum, you're going to get a chance to look into your future right now. And there's some words from Austin Idol, brother. Right now, we want to get back here real quick, right after the match that just took place at the Coliseum. want to get a few comments from the heartthrob, Austin Idol. Austin. Hey, you want words from me? You want words from me, mister? Here's words. Get out of my sight, you punk. Let me lay something on you. A lot of people in Memphis hate my guts, and they got reason. But there's a lot of people out there that love Austin Idol. But I'll tell you one thing about them. All of them know one thing. I'm a big, bad dude with a nasty attitude. And Eddie Marlin has just given me the word, Jack. And you know what he told me? One word! And it was my word. It was cage. C-A-G. Cage. I know how to spell it, and I know what to do when I get in it. You see this Louisville slugger, Eastern slugger, ceramic slugger, I don't care what slugger it is, it ain't the bat. It's the dude who's holding the bat. And you're looking at Jose Canseco right here. Jose Canseco never swung a bat like I'm going to swing one Monday night. And I can promise you one thing, and I don't care if you're black as the ace of spades. I don't care if you're white. I don't care if you're red. I don't care if you're yellow. I don't care if you're green. If you'd like to see red, like you're looking at my face right here. This was just enough to crank me up, Jack. Then on Monday night, you tell your women, you tell your children, you tell your sugar daddies, you tell your boyfriends, you tell your mistresses, you tell your husbands, you tell your wives, the mailman, the priest, the preacher. I don't care who you tell. You tell them one thing. There's going to be a butt kicking dude with a bad attitude inside a steel cage Monday night, and it's going to be me. Well, they're back out here, Dirty White Boy, Dirty White Girl, and Eddie Gilbert, who looks like trying to take over the Eddie desk here. You're right. <laughs> you know, it sounds to me like that there's a lot of people coming out here 
and all they want to do is whine and cry like, oh, he hit me with this, this person run in, that person run in. Well, why don't you accept the cold, hard facts? You got beat up. You got beat right in the middle of the ring. Accept it. Be men. If I lose, I'm mad enough to say, hey, I lost. I'll catch you another day, another day down the road. But you lost. No, no. You want to bring it back in a steel cage. Well, that's fine and dandy, brother, because the last time that I was in a steel cage, I almost had to go to the police station for manslaughter because I like to beat the man half to death. Now, it don't matter who you get, who wants to step in that cage. I don't care if you want to bring 50 fans out of the arenas and put them in that cage. I'll personally stomp every one of them. So, boys, all you got to do is have enough intestinal fortitude to show up <laughs> and crawl in that cage and listen to that real awesome sound. And that'll be the cage being locked. And then you'll know right then and there that you're locked in with the dirty white boy <laughs> and Mr. Hot Stuff himself. Dave Brown, this is a very serious day. I want to ask you first if you have a better suit than this. Because the following morning after this cage match, you're going to need one because you're going to be attending three funerals. Let me say, you guys could come out here and tell everybody you've been around here a long time. Well, I'll tell you how long you've been around here. You've been around here too long. I want to tell you, since I was a little kid, I have waited for this match. I have waited to enter a steel cage with three names that are legends in this area. I'm not going to stand out here and I'm not going to say, oh, Tony Anthony and myself are scared of a cage match. No, I'm not going to say that. I want you guys to step in the ring face to face because I've assembled an army better than King Hussein of Iraq has. And when I step in the ring with you, I'm going to look across the cage and I'm going to be looking at Margaret Thatcher, Mikhail Gorbachev, and George Bush. And this king is going to take you down. And you know, he can always say, there's going to be blood pouring like wine. There's going to be too much. And it's all going to be theirs. Oh, I feel so good. I do too. Well, supreme confidence as hot stuff Eddie Gilbert.